one of the cool things we do as a species is we use tools. We use a lot of tools, some more sophisticated than others. So let's talk about it where, where it all began and some of the earliest stone tools we can find in the fossil record. With stone tools, now we are firmly within the realm of archaeology. Archaeology is a super fun field because it gives us an idea of our behavior, what we're we actually doing. Um, and that is a very different view from looking at fossils. Um, when we're talking about tools, we are mean at any object that's held, you know, in our appendages, hand, foot, our mouth, and it's used to achieve something. So we're trying to get something done. Um, we are, of course, not the only species that use tools. Chimpanzees use tools. Um, this is my favorite thing they do. They are termite fishing. So, you know, they take a branch, they strip it um, of all of the little, you know, offshoots, and then they put it in the termite mound. The termites get very angry and clamp on it to, you know, defend against the invader. And then the chimpanzees just pull it back out and you have termites on a stick. Um, we also talk about tool manufacture. So this is the process where you are deliberately modifying an object to use as a tool. So chimpanzees do do it with their little branch. You know, they have to strip off all the other little offshoots. Um, but usually when we're talking about tool manufacture in the fossil record, we are talking about stone tools. Because, um, of course, you know, many different species use stone tools. Chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, capuchins. Here's a capuchin hefting a pretty large rock for his size, trying to crack open this nut. And even dolphins use tools. So some dolphins have figured out if you put some sponge on their nose, they can use that to protect their nose as they root around the bottom of the ocean floor, trying to find um, different fish that are hiding down there. Really... All of these tools are used to help them obtain food. And that's really the reason you use a tool, so you can access a type of food that you couldn't beforehand. Um, if we look at all of the African great apes here, all of them, all of them use tools. So that means all of our ancestors probably also use stone tools, or also use tools. But when we're talking about most of these other species using tools, it's generally lightly modified sticks and rocks. Um, it's not really super modified, and it's not going to be easily identifiable in the fossil record. When we're talking about human evolution, we are looking for stone tools that have been deliberately modified, and we can identify, like, someone did that intentionally. For a long time, the earliest stone tool industry people would talk about would be the old one. Um, so this is found at 2.6 million years ago in Ethiopia, um, and it's very common until about 1.6 million years ago. So we find it in a lot of different places. Um, so we find some cores, we find some flakes, we find some hammer stones. It's not terribly sophisticated, but it does get the stone job done. And remember, it is one of the earlier stone tool industries, so you're not going to expect to find super sophisticated things right off the bat. This does take time to develop. Um, so here's some old one. Um, we do find a little bit at post 2000, uh, 2 million years ago. Um, we actually find some in Dimanisi in the Republic of Georgia. You know, the, the, the country, not the state. They're, they're different things. Um, here we do find some hominid fossils and old one stone tools, but this is actually a slightly later species. Um, when we're talking about the old one, mostly the thing that happens is hard hammer percussion. So we're, you know, using a hammer stone to knock these flakes off of our core. And usually that flake um, with sharp edges is going to be our tool. You'll keep your core when you, because that is your uh, substrate with which you make more tools. Um, we think they were using these for animal butchery. Um, we know this because we find cut marks on the bones of bovids or elephants. Um, so here, here are some bones, and we see some cut marks. Um, we know these are stone tool cut marks because they actually leave slightly different types of cuts than, like, the teeth of cats or dogs. And also um, hammer stones, you know, when you're pounding things, that also leaves a slightly different, um, slightly different um, uh, type of wear, especially when you, these pits. Um, remember... Just because we see stone tool cut marks on bones doesn't mean our ancestors got them first. So it's possible they were scavenging um, what was left um, after, say, a lion killed something. Um, especially um, hominin ancestors might have been trying to break open bones to eat the marrow inside um, because most carnivores don't actually have teeth strong enough to break open bones. 
Um, so especially with some of these hammerstone notches and percussion pits, um, we may have been trying to open it up to suck out the marrow. Um, but the question here is, who made it? Well, we're finding a lot of stone tools, but we're not finding stone tools and hominin fossils in the same places. This is one of the frustrating things on the fossil record. You're rarely going to find everything at once, and you're going to find a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and all in different places. So thinking about the time the older one existed, there's a there's a lot of different species going on. There's a lot of potential makers of our older one. Um, so we could have some Paranthropus. We even have some late surviving Australopithecus. We have early Homo, and we even have some very early Homo erectus. So again, the early older one isn't directly associated with any fossils. Most people tend to think early Homo, but it could be Australopithecus, it could be Paranthropus. So when we're trying to decide amongst these different options here, we try to think about what are the other lines of evidence we could use. So to have to use tools in at all, you you need to be smart. Um, using tools requires both intelligence but also the manual dexterity to make them in the first place. It also reduces some of your need for other things. So if we're using tools, we're manipulating our food in our hands. We don't need as much for teeth or chewing muscles. So for this reason, most people are ruling out Paranthropus as one of the potential makers of these stone tool industries. And also, Old Awan tools after 2 million years are clearly associated with homo, species of Homo. So in general, we do assume that the Old Awan is made by early Homo because of this. It's just the very earliest spots of the Old Awan are not associated clearly with any fossils. But... Now we have something new. We have the Lamequian tools in, discovered in Kenya at 3.3 million years ago. Um, they were discovered in 2011, so this is really, really recent. So that's the reason why we talked about the old one first. That was discovered in what, 1950? It's been around for a while, and that's kind of been um, the standard that everybody's been learning, and now we're like actually having to learn. It was a lot older than we thought. So the Lamequian tools, these are much larger and heavier than the older one. We're finding cores, we're finding flakes, we're finding hammers and anvils. Um, the m manufacture of the Lamequian tools was a little bit different. So here we have block on block percussion. Um, so you have the anvil is a stationary object and now you're striking your core against it. Um, we do have a little bit of bipolar percussion. So again, your hammerstone is stationary. You put your core on top and then you strike it. Um, right there. So this is a little bit simpler, though it definitely works. Um, we do have a couple of ungulate bone fragments 3.4 million years ago in Ethiopia. So this is a different site, but we are finding par uh, marks from pounding and cutting on these ungulate bones. So probably a hominin was using stone tools to make them because no other species other than hominins were actually using stone tools. Um, it is weird that we're, you know, using information from a couple different sites to pull this all together, but that's what we think is happening. But now we have a new problem. Who's, who's making the Lomequian? If we look at who's around 3.3 million years ago, it's, it, it, it's probably Australopithecus aparensis. Remember, Kinyatris platyops, probably not real. But let's compare these two. Um, so the Lamequian tools are much larger and heavier. We also have this hard hammer percussion in the old one. So there's a little bit of increase in the manual de dexterity, the hand-eye coordination, and you also need to just understand the fracture properties of rock. So there is some increase of intelligence required um, to make the old one relative to the Lamequian. So here we can look at some of how the changes over time. So Lamequian, bigger, a little bit simpler, also earlier. Then we have the old one, generally um, described as pebble cores. So still relatively simple, but a little bit smaller and a little bit more complex than our Lamequian. And later we'll talk about the Acheulean, which is even more complex. Um, I also like this image because it just shows really clearly the size difference. The Lamequian stuff is huge. Like, I personally am not sure that I would want to use that as a tool. And I guess the old one is also not that great. That Acheulean, though, I'm all about the, those Acheulean hand axes. Those tools are sexy. But let's talk about how they're used. 
Um, so when, with all of these early stone tools, now with the discovery of the Lamechian tools, the first stone tools definitely predate the the origin of genus Homo. So some Ocelopith was using stone tools and we can actually no longer use the use of stone tools to like be like, oh, look at how special genus Homo is. We're going to need to update that. We do think they are associated with animal butchery, but it doesn't necessarily mean we were hunting. It could still be associated with scavenging. Um, and the Lamequian discovery is relatively new. So I want you to pay attention because if you are just searching on the internet, trying to learn more about stone tools, there are many resources that still list the old one as the oldest. That is no longer true. Um, the Lamequian stuff was discovered in 2011, but it was only published in 2015. And that is only five years old. So really, depending on what source you're looking at, it just hasn't updated. And unfortunately, a lot of the more popular science sources, they have no idea this was even discovered yet. It takes some time for the general public to be made aware of these newer discoveries. So remember, if someone ever asks you what the oldest stone tool industry is, it is not the old one. Okay? Okay. So can you explain what are the Lamequian old, old one stone tool industries and who do we think might have made them?